Jesus Because He first Down me The cavalry's cross Don't you know the song? Some of you need to help me to sing it. Calvary's cross I shall never hey, Take this down. Calvary's cross Take the boiling off Was another time. Oh, Calvary's cross, I shall never. Lord, I bless you. Oh, Calvary's cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Before you sit down, did you sing? Did we sing? Because the words are known. Did we sing? As a reflection of a true testimony coming from our hearts. Did we sing? Because we felt the constraining love of Jesus. That he loved us so much. He gave us so much. That we can't help but loving him back. I can sing tonight. Oh, how I love Jesus. The reason for this because, because, because he first. Love me. Love called for a demonstration. Love called for a manifestation. Love called for a declaration. But God so loved that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life he's proven his love by what he did and by what he continues to do so I have no doubt whether or not Jesus loves me as a children sing this I know. Yeah. For the Bible. Tells me so. I love him. Because. He first. He first. Joseph stand up with me. That's right. Take it out of your pocket man. Because. Lord Jesus. Love is expressive. I said love is expressive. And he expressed his love when he went to Calvary and died in my stead. That the soul so unworthy might live and the path to the cross he was willing to tread all the sins of my life to forgive so I can stand in communion and say they are nailed to the cross they are made to the cross. Oh, how much he was willing to bear with one arm. We shall lost. Jesus went. Cross all the sins of my life to forgive. Sing it one last time. You're coming into this. Their name is on the monitor to the cross. Their name. Hallelujah. willing to bear with an anguish Jesus went to the cross and began 
One last time. I think it goes out there. There was one who was willing to die in my stead. That a soul so unworthy might live. cross he was willing to dread all the sins of my life to forgive thank you God Lord I thank you Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how much he was willing to bear. Being an anguish, Jesus went to the cross. I think they used to say, He is patient and loving, and loving and patient, and patient with me while He cleanses my heart of its dross. This is what it's good, but there's no for I know I am free for my sins are all nailed to the cross yeah, they are nailed to the cross bless you you may be seated hallelujah uh, Lord I thank you Lord I thank you I mess up sometimes but Lord I thank you I stumble sometimes, but Lord, I thank you. Be our name to the cross. Deacon Nux is coming. But there are times in our lives when although God has forgiven us, there are those that refuse to forgive us. Thank you, God. Worship they know of your past life. Glory, I thank you. Worship they knew you used to do some stuff. They don't see you through a right now glass. But they pick up a past glass. 
They start to turn the pages of your past life. And try to remind you. Of what you were like. But the rest said, Deacon, Deacon Carr, there is no condemnation. For I know for all the sins. I'm going to stop. So while you might be trying to remind me, let me tell you where they are. They are nailed. Woo! Hey, God! Every mess you want to remember who I used to be. I have news for you. They are nailed to the cross. Glory! Glory! Hallelujah! Lord, I, I feel our president tonight with a spirit of gratitude. Yeah! With a spirit of thanksgiving. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, God. Don't try to take me back to my past. Be a name to the cross. He carried all my sins and he made them to the cross. Hallelujah. I don't know how you feel tonight. You see, some of us might not have had any bad thing in our past. So you can be grateful. But if we would be truthful tonight, there are some things in our lives. As a matter of fact, everything in our past life. We would not have been able to survive until now. If they had not been nailed to the cross. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. I am grateful. I'm appreciative, Lord, of what you've done. God bless you. As we sit prayerfully and as Deacon Nux comes, I want us not to forget had it not been for the old rugged cross. Had it not been for the spotless blood of the Lamb of God. Had it not been for a body that was broken. Hallelujah. He spilled his blood on Calvary's cross to purchase our salvation. So God, I want you to know tonight that I thank you for the job that you did Thank you for you brought me for. I thank you. Hallelujah for everything you've done. I'm going to thank you, Lord. I'm going to praise your holy name. Oh, God. We're not going to sing it. But if we had a time, Brother Joseph, that's right, if we had time, I would sing Jesus. I never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I never forget how you set me free. Jesus, 
I never forget where you brought me how you brought me up Jesus 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 I never forget for never hallelujah glory our men's president ah comes up Oh God, oh God. I won't forget. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I thank you. God, I bless your name. God, I bless your name. God, I bless your name. God, I thank you. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why? Should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? Thank you, Jesus. When Jesus is my portion. Glory. My constant friend is he for his eye is on the sparrow. Lord, we thank you. And I know that he watches yes, he does. over me. For his eyes, his eyes on the little sparrow. God, I thank you. And I know, I know, I know. He watches. God, I praise your name. Me. That's why I can see. I see. Because. I'm happy. I'm happy. That's why I can I see. sing. Because, because I'm free. Hey. For his eyes. He's on Lord. the little sparrow. Lord, I thank you. And I Lord. know he wants That's why I can see. Yes, I see. Because, because I'm happy. I can I see. see. Because, because I'm free. For his eyes. He's on the little smile. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I know. I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 God, I just want to thank you tonight. Bless the name Jesus. I just want to thank you tonight, Jesus.
I just want to thank you tonight, God. I just want to greet my pastor and evangelist Russell in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for this opportunity. I'm just going to read one verse for you, which is found in Psalms number 53, verse 1. A fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Corrupt they are and have dumb, done abomina abomina abominable, sorry, iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God, I thank you. You know, it's a very short, <laughs> a very short verse, but it says a lot in it. A fool has said in his heart, there's no God. Now, I was just reading a little notation at the bottom of my Bible. I was talking about what a fool is. A fool does not mean that the person does not have any sense, that the person is not educated. A fool means that a person that knows within their heart that there's a God, but they don't want to accept it, they don't want to believe it. A fool is someone that decides that they're not going to believe that there's a God so, so they can find some way to cover what they're doing, to give them an excuse to do what they're doing, just to say, okay, there's no God, so I can do whatever I want to do, and I'm fine. I don't have to worry about some things. You know, I had, a, I had a talk with a young lady at a bank the other day, and she said, oh, well, I'm going to hell anyway, so why not just go? You know, I looked at her and I said, my God, you've got to understand we're here. God has brought us into this world for a purpose. Our purpose is to worship him, is to serve him, is to honor, and what we're supposed to do also, we're supposed to take care of one another. We are supposed to be our brother's keeper, we're supposed to be there to help one another. But we find that, that we have allowed the adversary to come into our hearts and to steal, to rob from us that thing that God has promised us. You know, he knows where he's going. He understands and he recognizes that he has lost out on what he could have gotten. But because of his selfishness and greed, because he, you know, he wanted to get everything for himself, he wanted to get all the praise for himself. But because of that, he recognized what he has done, and that's why he is doing what he is doing to us today. We look in our system today because, you know, they have tried to take God out of everything that we do. To say that it's not necessary to worship God, it's not necessary to go to church. All you have got to do is to read your Bible, and you're fine. But the Bible tells us, listen, where two or three is gathered together, touching anything that concerns him there will his spirit be also. We have got to understand that we need to be together. There is a God that we need to worship. There is a God that we need to serve. It is foolish to think that we can live from day to day, not getting up in the morning, not saying, God, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for taking me out or bringing me back safe because nothing is promised to me. I take this thing for granted. As I said earlier, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want for something to come my way to help me to, to recognize, listen, there is God. I need to worship him. I need to give him thanks. There are times I just take it for granted. I'm going to get up the next morning. I'm going to wake up. Everything is going to be all right. I'm going to get in my car. I'm going to drive to work, and everything is going to be all right. Not so. It is not promised to me. That's why every day that I live, every moment that I breathe, I've got to say, God, I thank you because I recognize that there's a God there. I understand that there's a God to be served. I understand that there's a God to be worshipped. I understand that there's a life that I must live that is pleasing to God. I understand that my life must be a living testimony for someone else to bring them into the understanding that there's a God to be worshipped and one to be served. We have got to understand that our responsibility as, as individuals, as children of God, is to live a life that someone can see. There is something different about that person. They will see you when you interact with them that there are certain things that you don't say that you don't do. Because of that, they're not going to come to you and they're not going to say certain things to you because they understand you have a standard that's different from them. And they're going to, they, they're going to respect you. But you have got to stand firm recognizing that you are a vessel of honor, not one of dishonor. You have got to understand your purpose. Our purpose is to serve and to worship the living God that is there. We have proven it many 
times that there is a God to be worshipped. Yeah. If we want proof, we look at the animals. We look at nature. Everything points back to God. These things cannot happen from a great bang situation. It's not possible. There has to be a being that created all of this. It does not make sense. As much as evolution has tried to identify and to say that there's no God, they cannot find a justifiable understanding or explain it to us. It doesn't make sense. They always stop it there, told because something does not add up. So we have got to understand that, listen, there is a God. There is a God. We know it because he lives with inside of us. How can we just come out of nothing, out of a, a single organism and develop, evolve, as they say, with evolution? We look at evolution and we, we, we're saying, okay, I'm waiting all these years. I haven't seen us evolved yet. I haven't seen me evolved. I'm still the same man. I have not changed. The animals have not evolved. They're still the same. You know, we got to understand there is a God. There is a God, and we need to worship him in spirit and in truth. And anyone that comes to us, we can show them in the word. We can tell them, okay, look, just look around you. Observe what you see. How could this happen? How could this be possible for this to happen this way? Not so. There has to be a greater power. There has to be someone there that has done this. Because the Big Bang just does not work. It does not work. It's not possible. It's not possible. I just want to thank God for this opportunity tonight just to say these few words to me. And you pray for me in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, short but to the point. Thank you, Jesus. The fool had said in his heart. So we have to ask ourselves the question, what classification have we fallen under? Because when we know that there is a God. When we know that there's someone that we have to answer to. When we realize that there's somebody, there's someone over us. When we know the authority that they walk in. When we recognize their place. Our approach to such a person, when we know, will be different. Hello, somebody. Hello, everybody. Knowing makes a difference. Oh, help me tonight. I'm not going to do I'm not trying to go over what Deacon just said. It's more than an acquaintance. I say it's more than an acquaintance. To know there must be a relationship that is developed. To know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the question is. Do we know. That there is. A God. Sometimes when we examine ourselves. Examine what's happening around us. I'm not even going out in the world now. Amongst us that profess to be saved. Then we have to wonder. Does such a person really understand? Do they know? That there is. A God. Because like I said. Knowing it makes. A difference. Hallelujah. I say this tonight. I'm going to send you home. It's after nine. But those that visit, I'm not going to use the president. Let's step out of the country. England. When they have the privilege to visit the Queen of England, 
their approach to this woman. Because they recognize that she is royalty. And they know what authority she walks in. The way they approach her is different how they would approach you and I. Come and talk with me. Makes a world of difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And by the way they approach her, her place as a queen is honored. And because her place as queen is honored, then she's also honored. Do we know that there is a God? Or are we classified? We're looking here tonight. It's only safe folk in here, you know. What does that say to us? We can't talk to the unsaved. I said, the preacher is talking to you. God is talking to you. We are the ones that is being addressed. The fool said in his heart, didn't speak out loudly for you to hear. But in their heart, they spoke. And they said, there is no God. What does that say, Pastor? My outward action does not match what's in my heart. It's contrary. I say one thing, but in my heart. I act one way, but in my heart. But the fool said in his heart, there is no God. We don't have to speak it says there is no God, but by what we do, speaks, it says exactly what we are thinking. God help us tonight. God help me tonight that my actions will match what my heart is saying. If my action look like truth, then what's been said inwardly must be on the same level. God bless you. Deaconus, God bless you. Amen. You said it all. You said it all. And we bless the Lord tonight. You've told us very briefly. Make sure that your actions matches with what is being said. Where the band is white. Hallelujah. My friend. Have you heard? Your Jesus. Jesus, do you know my Jesus? Jesus. Do, do you know? know? Oh Lord, my, my friend, friend. Mm -hmm. have, have you heard? heard? My Jesus, do you know? Ah, my friend, do 
you know my friend have you heard he, he loves you and that he will abide to the end Bless the name of Jesus. Do you know my Jesus? Do you know my friend? Have you heard? Will you stand with us, please? Do you know? Thank you, Lord. My G. My Jesus. Do you know? My friend. 